It's changed dramatically. I think when I started off, there were two coaches at North Melbourne in 1993, and you were at the MCG Games. Um, the only, you were virtually the only full-time employees of the club. A little bit of perspex between you during the games, and you could feel just down the back of your neck, uh, you know, the hairs of your neck stand up, and you could feel the other person, what he was doing. To where it is now, each club's got a senior coach and four or five full-time assistants, and it's virtually coaching panel against coaching panel. And where, where's coaching going today? Well, there's a real shift now from the traditional um, technique-based uh, coaching program that really focused on your skills, kicking, marking, handball, and not that you should ever forget that, but it's really gone to a, a, a game-based decision-making program where players and the, the, the teams like Geelong and Hawthorne and Adelaide and Sydney and Collingwood uh, are now really uh, coaching their uh, groups on uh, decision making and, and it's a real game based program and it's amazing how we've taken so long to uh, cotton onto this. It's been happening in European soccer, overseas or Brazilian soccer. You see young kids playing as little as eight, nine uh, years of age playing soccer and no instruction, just letting them make decisions, putting them in game situations, letting each individual learn. And maybe it's one of the reasons why our Indigenous footballers are so talented. They come from mostly from rural backgrounds and the games that they play as young boys and that sort of stuff. And maybe that's why you, you see a lot of these Indigenous footballers who make the right decision with their exciting skill level and, and it really brings a new dimension um, to AFL football. And I think the game is really now, the smart clubs and the smart coaches are coaching their teams on a real um, game-based decision-making process now.